Chapter Thirty of Bob's A Girl Detective. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Bob's A Girl Detective by Grace May North. Chapter Thirty: A Hero Rewarded. A week later, Lena May was in the sunny kitchen of the Pensinger Mansion making broth. A curly-headed three-year-old boy was sitting on the floor playing contentedly with his toys. He had been told that his mother had gone to a beautiful country where she would be well and happy, and that some day he would see her again. "'Mother likes Tommy to stay with you, Auntie May,' he prattled as the girl stooped to kiss him. Then he suddenly reached up his chubby arms, he added, "'Tommy likes to stay with you.' there now the broth's ready and tony may help auntie may she told him the little fellow was given a plate of crackers and the girl followed with a bowl of steaming refreshment they went to bob's room where a lad was laying in bed once again dean wiggin had fought a fire for the sake of a friend but this time had undone the harm that had been done in the long ago even the surgeon who had been called in declared that the way the lad had wrenched his arm free had actually used it was little less than a miracle but all through the ages people who with a high purpose have called upon god for help have received it and that a help has been maimed a miracle see lena may the lad said as he stretched out his left arm it moves doesn't it stiffly perhaps but i must keep it going the doctor told me then he drew himself into a sitting position and the girl raised the pillows to make him comfortable he smiled at her beamingly as he said another bit of good news is that tomorrow i may get up just because one wall of a burning tenement fell on me is no reason why i should remain in bed longer than one week and be waited upon you surely had a wonderful escape dean the girl said as she gave him the broth just by chance the fireman instantly turned the water where you had fallen so you weren't burnt nor drowned said the lad merrily just knocked senseless then after a moment's pause he continued i want to be up and about before nell returns she will be in about noon to-morrow unless it got into the new england papers which isn't likely she won't know a thing about it i don't want her to hear of it before i tell her she would imagine all sorts of things that aren't true and be needlessly worried how glad your sister will be when she finds that the use of your arm has been restored to you lena may sat by the bedside holding tony on her lap won't she dean's upward glance was radiant no longer will i have to follow the profession of old bookseller i want to do something that will keep that arm constantly busy what dean have you thought yes indeed you won't think it's a very wonderful ambition i want to be a farmer i don't like this crowded city i feel as though i can't breathe when i am lying here alone i keep thinking of that new england farm where my boyhood was spent and i long to really work in that rocky soil standing up now and then to breathe deep of that sparkling air and to gaze at that wide view over the meadowlands and the shining curving silver ribbon that is really a river to the distant mountains lena may how i wish you could see it with me i am sure that i would love it the girl said then rising she added here comes gloria and miss hardinian they are going to hear some hungarian music to-night and i promise to have an early supper for them tony may stay with you i am sure he would like to hear a story about the little wild creatures who live on your farm but when the girl was gone the little fellow accommodatingly curled up by dean's side and went to sleep and so the lads thought were left free to dream of a wonderful something that might happen some day on that far-away new england farm End of chapter 30